today we'll be introducing our 3D body analyzer. This is one of the most sophisticated pieces of medical equipment on the market today. We have four 510K FDA registrations on our machine. We are assessing multiple components of the body and getting a full body analysis in less than seven minutes. We are assessing the autonomic nervous system, arterial stiffness, we're getting pseudomotor response, we're measuring galvanic skin response in the hands and in the feet. We are measuring the circulatory system, the cardiac system, the digestive system. We are seeing arterial stiffness assessments in the small, medium, and large arteries. We're getting assessment for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hepatitis, prostate for men, ADHD for children, and neurotransmitters of the brain, such as serotonin, dopamine, GABA response, and also thyroid functioning. We're taking all of the internal organs and getting a full analysis assessment to see if there's any inflammation, overuse of the cells, underuse, fibrosis, vasoconstriction, and see if there's anything going on that's causing troubles in the digestive tract. With all this information, we're getting a full dietary recommendation summary based on their physiological health. We're seeing how many calories they are burning, what foods to avoid, foods to eat, what micronutrients they should possibly supplement or foods associated with it so they can add that into their diet. So not only do we have a preventative measurement and a full assessment, we can see what the patients can do next. So the machine comes with a laptop. We can use that for not only with our software developed inside of the computer, but you can also use it for your daily functions to save files, import and export uh, patient records, you can take our files from our tests that we've done and input it onto your other EMR records, or you can take some of your electronic medical records and lab tests that you have done previously and import it onto this computer to keep all of your files in one place. The machine comes with three cables. You can use these cables to hook up the hand plates, the foot plates, and the two electrodes for the forehead. It also comes with a pull socks to measure oxygenation and saturation of the blood. We get two white cables to hook up from the USBs of the laptop onto the components internally in the hand plates to have the whole functioning of the machine. We come with electrodes for the forehead, we hook up one on the left and right side above the eyebrow to measure brain activity. We have our hand plates that we use now inside of the hand plates we have uh, our monitor that we actually hook up the wires to connect to the hand plates to the USB of the computer. We have our foot plates that the patients put their feet on when they are sitting in the part of the test. The machine also comes with a strap for the forehead for those patients who have an oily forehead or the electrodes don't fit on their skin as well. The machine comes with a blood pressure monitor so we can assess their blood pressure easily. So if you're on the go, you have a monitor with you. So if you're bringing the machine to an assisted living facility, a hospice center, or anywhere where you're visiting the patients at their home, we can bring it all in this one box and so it's very, very mobile. It also comes with a calibration box. You can actually hook up your laptop and the wires to here instead of the foot and the hand plates and the forehead and we can do Wi-Fi based software updates to help with calibrations of the machines and continue to do software updates without actually having to visit your machine or turn it back in. We can do it all in, the, in your office or your home. So everything you see in front of you has comes with the machine. It can all fit in this box so it's easy to ship, easy to bring wherever you go. You have everything that you need to run thousands of scans on all of your patients multiple times to get a better patient outcome, bring in more even revenue for your company. There's lifetime support. We have lifetime warranties on all the machine and software updates come for you for free all the time. Not many companies do that, so that's what sets us apart in addition to how sophisticated our equipment is. We're going to better patient outcome, use this great for preventative care and better management tools of our patients assessments as they're in our practice and in the future for them and their health. Now I will show you how to set up the 3D body analyzer. It is very easy to do so when you are on the go if you are visiting a patient 
outside of your practice. You can set it up very quickly and not waste too much time. So here we have our foot plates. We have a few wires that are going to go into the front, the pull socks and the electrodes for the forehead. And then we're going to hook up the USBs from the computer here and the two other electrodes can, to connect to the hand plates and the foot plates. So first, let's go ahead and start with the two white USBs. We are going to hook them up onto the side of the laptop. Just like that. And we'll set the laptop back down. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes to which side here. We just want to hook up one into each side. So just right there. You can hear it from the computer. as they plug in. So we know that they're being hooked up properly. So I'll keep it facing this way. Now we're going to hook up the three blue leads. We're going to hook up one of them. Here there's an icon that shows the foot. We're going to hook, plug it in straight. And we're going to follow this wire and we're going to plug it in into the bottom of the foot plate. Now we have it plugged into the bottom because of some patients their foot size is different, larger, smaller. We don't want them kicking it off at the top. So we've put a hole here so it's cleaner and easier. So we're going to go ahead and just feed them through the holes. And we're going to put red on the right. So R and R. Red will always be hooked up on the right side for all areas of the test. So we have two buttons to hook up here. It's going to click just like that. And the foot plate is all hooked up. So now we're going to do the same thing for the hands. We're going to hook them up in the same exact spot. And there's two buttons on each side in here. We're going to go ahead and do red on the right. It's going to click in just like that and black on the left, just like that. So we're finished with any hookups on the back. Now we have a few hookups on the front and we are completely set up. So the last blue wire is going to be the electrodes that are going to hook up to the forehead. So we'll go ahead and come right here. There's one plug in on the right side. And that is going to connect to our electrodes. And what we're going to do here, it doesn't matter which one hooks up right now, but when we hook it up onto the forehead, we're going to do red on the right, the patient's right. So make sure when you're mirroring the patient, you put it on their right. And the last component to plug in is our pull socks. We're going to plug that in right here. Clicks in just like that. And we are completely set up. The last component, we're going to wrap this around the patient's forehead to cover the electrodes just to keep them to stick a little bit better. And we're going to have the pull socks on their finger. We have an alcohol prep pad to wipe off any makeups and oils on the forehead. So it's very, very easy to set up. We're going to bring the foot plates down. Face the hand plates to be in conjunction to the foot plates. Get the pull socks ready for left or right hand, and the electrodes will be put up onto the forehead. And that's the complete setup of the 3D body analyzer. So now we're going to go ahead and prepare the patient to do the test. First, we're going to go ahead and use an alcohol prep pad to wipe any oils or makeups off of the forehead. And dispose of the prep pad. And then we're going to go ahead and have your feet come onto the foot plates. I'm going to put two electrodes on your forehead. Right will be going on the right hand side. And I prefer to tuck it behind the patient's ears in order for the wires to be out of the face. Left above the left eyebrow.
Is that comfortable? And we're going to go ahead and put the band around the forehead to make sure that the electrodes stick throughout the entire procedure. I'm going to have you place your hands on the plates here. Now have your right index finger. And that's how we prep the patient for the test. So now that we've prepared the patient for the test, we're going to go ahead and go on to our laptop to go through the software to input the patient's information. So we'll open up the RMS software. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And now here you're going to see our patient database. Now these are all the tests that we've done in the past. And we can go ahead and click on any of these patients at any time and open up the results to view how their test results were in the past. If they've done multiple tests, we can see comparative reports from the first test to the second test to make sure their health is improving. But for this procedure, we're going to go ahead and put in a new patient. So in the top left-hand corner, you go ahead and click the new patient icon. We'll input the patient's first and last name. We're going to select her gender as a female. We're going to put the date of birth. Now the remainder of the information is not necessary, her email, her address. That is if you want to input your electronic medical records onto this patient file, we can. It is not necessary, so for our demonstration purpose, we will not. We're going to go ahead and put the patient's height and weight, her daily activity level, and her blood pressure. Now in this form of the test, we can see if the patient is taking any medication, we can go ahead and input that data here. Choose the medication they're taking in order to have this information for lab results, for clinical studies information later on. She is not taking anything, so we're just going to go ahead and do a checkup. And then we'll click OK. And then we'll come to the fourth icon from the left-hand side where it says Start the Measurements. And it'll pop up the signs to start the measurements. So we can see here on the page that the patient is prepped properly. We have OKs on the head, the hands, and the feet. We can see the digital pulse wave fluctuating properly, so we know that the machine is hooked up properly and the patient is ready for the test. So we're going to go ahead and click Start. Now the test itself is less than six minutes. We break it down to a few different procedures. The first two minutes, as we we'll say, baseline recording. is a baseline recording. Now this is a part of the test where we're actually measuring the body under a resting rate. We're measuring over 120 different internal biomarkers to assess the full body's health. We can see how the patient is at a resting rate. Later on in the test, we're going to go ahead and have her do a stress index test, a Valsalva maneuver. We're going to have her hold her breath for 15 seconds. We will do that two times to get more accurate of readings. We'll have the patient stand up for an orthostatic hypotension test. And if you have this in conjunction with a tilt table in your practice, you can actually use a seventh CPT code to reimburse an extra $200 per examination. If we look on the software, we can see a few things. We have our heart rate detection on the top left side. We can see the digital pulse wave on the bottom right. Up here on the top right, we can see the bioimpedance conductance. Now the color here does not matter. This is just the strength of the biofeedback markers that we are measuring throughout the system. On the bottom right, we can see the SpO2 measurements, so we can see the oxygenation. On the top right-hand side, we can see a couple of icons and a couple of rows where we can see her heart rate right now, her signal quality of the test. If she moves her hands around or the finger on the oximeter, it will show the signal quality higher or lower, so we always want to make sure that the patient's finger are stable and that we want to make sure that our signal quality is always high. If the signal quality is not high enough for the test to be accurate, we'll go ahead and restart the test and it'll prompt us Baseline to restart Baseline recording it. is finished. Make sure to remove foot plates and forehead electrodes prior to continue. So the computer makes it very, very easy to do the test. It'll tell us what Phase to do. Phase two. This is the time for Volsilva maneuver. Click start only when patient is ready to inhale. Procedure. Patient need to take a deep breath, close mouth, and block nose airways with his left hand. 
Patient need to hold for 15 seconds, then relax with left arm palm up. So now what we will do, we will prepare the patient. So we're going to go ahead and take off the electrodes for the forehead. And then I'm going to have you go ahead and take your feet off of the foot plates. Now we can use these electrodes three to four times until the sticky is off of the electrodes. So we like to put them back into a proper disposable position where we can use them again. We're going to, going to clean them with a hydrogen peroxide and water-based spray. So now that the patient's foot is off the plate, the electrodes are off, we're going to go ahead. So when you're ready, before we start the test, I'm going to have you take a full deep breath of air. You're going to hold your breath for 15 seconds. You're going to bring your nose up, your hand up to plug your nose, and then you're going to rest your hand with your palm up as soon as you get to 15 seconds. So when you're ready, you're going to take a full deep breath of air. And our timer is on the bottom right hand side. When we get to 15, we'll prompt the patient, but she can see as well. When we get to 15 seconds, she's just going to let all of her air out. Okay, go ahead and let your air out and rest your hand, palm up. Perfect. Now we're going to let the patient rest for about 20 seconds, and then we're going to go ahead and repeat that Valsalva maneuver to have her hold her breath another time for 15 seconds. This is time for the second Volsalva. Procedure. Take a deep breath, close airways and hold for 15 seconds. Then breathe normally. So, when you're ready, the same exact thing for the procedure. You're going to take a full deep breath of air and hold it for 15 seconds. So when you're ready, go ahead. And our timer is on the bottom right hand side again. Now during this measurement, we are seeing her heart rate detection on the left, we're going to be looking at the cardiac output, her stroke volume, her heart rate and how it's fluctuating. Go ahead and let your air out. Good. Now we're going to have about 20 more seconds and then we're going to have her do an EI ratio and a pseudomotor assessment by having her do some slow breathing. It will prompt us how to do that when we get there. On the middle of the screen, more on the right hand side, we still have the heart rate detection and the SpO2. We have the heart rate um, EKG on the top left side and the digital pulse on the bottom left. Phase 3. This is time for deep breathing. Click start only when patient is ready to inhale. Procedure. Patient has to slowly inhale for 5 seconds and slowly exhale for 5. This has to be repeated for 30 seconds. So when you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and click start. On the screen, you're going to see a blue bar rising when you want to inhale and going down when you want to exhale. You're going to do this a total of three times, so 30 seconds. So when you're ready, are you ready? Okay, so you're going to go ahead. Inhale for five seconds. And hold it. Exhale and for exhale. five seconds. Good, and you'll repeat that two more times. Inhale for five seconds. Exhale for five seconds. And one more time. Inhale for five seconds. Exhale for five seconds. Good. Phase four. This is time to stand up. Click start only when patients stand up. Right hand must not move. So, this is the final part of the test. It's the orthostatic test. When you're ready, you're going to go ahead and stand up. Now, this is why we've taken the foot plates away. We do not want the patient to stand on the foot plates. You're going to keep your hands where they are, and we'll just have you stand up. And we'll go ahead and click start for the measurements. We're going to have the patient stand for 50 seconds, and the entire test is complete. So on the screen, we still see your heart rate detection, digital pulse wave, SpO2, and heart rate measurements. We can see our signal quality is very strong. And we see all the different values. Now, the best part about this test is as soon as we finish this examination, the results pop up instantly. So there's no more waiting for lab results to come back, no more waiting for uh, different doctors to do what they need to do or fitting in the waiting rooms. We can get our results and review the patient's assessment instantly after the test is completed. So as you can see, in a very quick test, we are getting tremendous amounts of results. 
This is such a sophisticated piece of equipment. We are going to know what to do with our patients in no time at all. We can inform them on what to do to take the next step to getting healthy again. Now you're going to take your normal office visit from $60 up easily up to between $300 to $500 just from this test alone. We're going to have the patients walk away with knowing what to do to improve their health and keep them more satisfied in addition to bringing more revenue into our practice and saving time. So Javsman has given us permission to go ahead and go over her test results and show the demonstration on the video so we can be Medicare and HIPAA compliant in order for you guys to see some of the test results. Now we are getting about 20 pages of results just from this examination. It is very, very detailed and very interactive. So I'm going to go ahead and go through page by page everything in the results that we find. So on our first page of the test, as soon as we finish the the demonstration or as soon as we finish the test on the patient, the results pop up instantly. So it's very quick, very efficient, there's no waiting time, there's no loading time, it comes up right away. Now we've colored everything to be very easy to read and very efficient in time. Now 20 pages is a lot of results to go through, so we've color coded everything to be very efficient in time and we're going to actually train the doctor on how to go through all the results in less than two minutes so they don't have to spend too much time finding out what's wrong. So on this first page, green is good, red is far above normal, yellow is a little bit above normal, blue is slightly below, and dark blue is moderately or severely decreased. Now we're looking at the bioimpedance markers and different test results. So when we click on any of these numbers, a pop-up comes up and we can see exactly what we're looking at. So for example, SVR is system vascular resistance. The definition that comes up on the screen is an indicator of peripheral resistance to flow that must be overcome to push blood through the circulatory system. On the top we have our normal ranges. Now based on our results we can color code it with what is normal, what is above normal, what is below normal, and we can show the severity of it. So when we see a red we kind of show like it's a red flag. So when we see a yellow, it's a yellow flag Blue is just slightly below, so that's just like a yellow flag as well. So we're looking at a lot of different things on this first page. If we start on the left, we're looking at blood pressure, systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, and pulse pressure. Again, if you click on anything here, it gives us a definition of what we're looking at. As you use the machine more and more, you're going to learn more about it, you're going to understand it more, and be able to become more and more efficient at it every time you use it. So as we come across, we're looking at hemodynamics, CO components for cardiac output, left ventricle evaluation, arterial stiffness, pseudomotor response, sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, oxygenation levels, and body composition. So we can go ahead and click through any of these at any time to get more detailed information. But when we're working in the practice and we have at least 20 patients in the waiting room, we can't go through everything and take too much time. So wherever there's red, we're going to go ahead and click on it, see what's wrong, and get a good analysis so we can continue to know what to look for as we go through the results. Yellows is a good idea to look at as well if there is anything that is far above or below normal, as well as blue. Now this is a summary of the RMS software. We get a detailed explanation page by page of exactly what we're looking at to have a lot better analysis so you can have a better diagnosis. So along the bottom of the screen, you see five icons on the left. These are the icons of the different pages on the RMS software. So we are on the image of the home, which is the main indicators. If we click on the second icon, it brings us to our segmental pseudomotor response analysis. So here on the screen you can see graphs of the left foot, the right foot, our foot total, left hand, right hand, total on the hands, left forehead, right forehead, and total forehead. This page is a great page to detect diabetic neuropathy, peripheral vascular resistance, hyperhidrosis on the opposite end of the spectrum, high nerve response and pH balance from sweat glands just to see how the patient's diet is, how the circulation and nerve response is in the hands and feet. So when we see a patient and these bars on the feet or the hands are down in the blue, especially bottom lined, it's a great detection of peripheral vascular resistance, diabetic neuropathy, 
uh, poor circulation into the area. If it's up in the red, it's a great detection for hyperhidrosis. So this is a great way to help aid in your diagnosis for instead of having to go ahead and do an EMG that will take a long time, it's painful for the patient, we can do a quick analysis here to get very similar and accurate results. Now all these test results are above gold standard of accuracy, so over 90% accurate. So we can rely on this test. If we click on the third icon, we get the full body composition analysis. Now we break it down to fat-free mass, body fat mass, total body water weight, and we see that water fluid distribution in intra and extracellular, so we can get a great diagnosis. Now we see a lot of greens here. Again, everything is color-coded. So if there's any oranges or reds, we know that we need to look further. Now there's not too much going on here. There's a lot of green. Now when we look at the intra and extracellular, we can see if the patients are hydrated properly, if their cells have any toxicity, and it can help aid in a lot of our diagnosis for what is going on, if they're drinking enough water, how their diet is. On the right-hand side, we can see our vital signs we inputted, their total body water weight. We can see their basal metabolic rate to see how many calories they need just to survive every day. We have the algorithms that we've used so you can get the information as well and also the actual impedance that we use to get this measurement. On the fourth icon, we break it down more into actual lab results. We get the numbers, we get the information, the graphs that a lot of doctors like to look at. So if we click again on any of these, um, these numbers, we can get a pop-up coming up to see exactly what we're measuring. So for example, the DO2, the delivery of oxygen, or oxygen delivery is the rate of oxygen transport in the arterial blood. So if it's green, we have our normal values. If it's a little bit above or a little bit below, it'll show up in an orange. If it's further above the normal, it'll show up in a red. There's a lot of times when the results come up more reds than anything else. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're unhealthy. It just shows that they have an over-response of being normal. So they have a higher delivery of oxygen than a normal person, the higher VO2, the higher left ventricle ejection time. So we can assess actually what a lot of measurements for um, VO2 measurements, DO2 do in a cardiac test, and we can actually have the athletes come on here and see how their heart is getting stronger as we do the test and see as they're getting more athletically fit, we can, see, we can track their progress very easily. So on the fifth icon, we have heart rate variability baseline indicators, autonomic nervous system testing, Valsalva ratios, and we can see their heart rate, their respiratory rate, and then a bunch of information here. And again, click on anything, we get a detailed information of what's going on where. Now across right here, there's four other tabs that we look at. If you click on the HRV records, we have our EKG. We can click across the test to see if there's any heart palpitations or skips a heartbeat to see if there's anything to look at. Now we summarize your heart rate variability geometric analysis. So we, we can actually look at the letters and numbers. We don't have to. We summarize everything onto this fourth icon where we see their autonomic nervous system assessment. Now we see a high parasympathetic sympathetic activity and a normal sympathetic activity. Now it shows consequences that are common such as drug effects, lifestyle, stress, uh, lack of sleep, um, improper diet, things of that nature. So we can have a quick questionnaire to see if the patient, what are they doing? Are they on medications? That's possibly affecting their autonomic nervous system. So from here, we're going to go ahead and exit the RMS software. And we're going to come onto the desktop and double click on the RM3D. Now we're going to click OK. And it's going to pull up our patient database, we're going to choose Jasmine Ramos and click the third icon from the left on the top, which is our results, and it'll come up instantly. Now here we have information for cardiovascular disease. We can see any risk assessment in terms of cardiovascular disease. So we have an image of the heart rotating on the left. Now if there's any abnormalities, inflammation, any problems going on, we're going to have it lit up based on the risk. Now we have yellow, orange, and red to show the severity of the condition. For example, if the coronary vessels were lit up, or if the aorta was lit up because of uh, calcification or hardening of the arteries, we would know. If the patient's heart rate is too high or too low or off balance, the sinus node might be lit up. But on the right-hand side, we break down arteriothroma, 
LDL cholesterol, left ventricle hypertrophy, and inflammation process. So we can see any early detections of what's going on for cardiovascular disease. The level is here. Here we have all grays, which is good. As the risk gets worse, we see yellow, orange, and red. On the right-hand side, we have suggested supplementary examinations. So if we need to do any other additional testings for information, for example, C-reactive protein, an echocardiogram, it'll let us know just so we can get a more detailed analysis of the heart. On the bottom side, we can see the different icons. So we're going to click the second one, which is diabetic screening. Now, we don't just look at the A1C level. We're not drawing blood, so we don't see the blood sugar levels. We look at what causes diabetes. So we look at metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, beta cell function, impaired glucose tolerance, microvascular and ethoneal cell function. So we can see what is causing diabetes. So we can see a pre-diabetic, a diabetic type 1 and type 2. We can see exactly what's causing it based on their reactions and give them the proper medication, supplementation, or lifestyle change to improve their health. Now, if they're on medication, for example, like metformin, their levels may be managed down, which is a good thing. We can see if their diabetes is being controlled. If it is uncontrolled, we can tell, and we can see if they need to switch their medication. So it's a great management tool. As we come across the third icon, we look at any assessment for chronic hepatitis. We can see if there's any risk detected, mild, moderate, or severe. And it will give suggested supplementary examinations based on their health. For men, we go ahead and look at prostate. Children, ADHD for learning. Because she's not in those categories, we'll go ahead and skip that and go to the final side. We're looking at cerebral neurotransmitters and thyroid response. So we break down the neurotransmitters and we're looking at serotonin, dopamine and noradrenaline response, cerebral GABA response, and thyroid. So if there's any over-response, it's going to show up yellow if it's mild, and orange if it's excessive. If it's below normal, we're going to see a light blue. If it's very poor response, it'll be dark blue. So we can see uh, overall, basically, summary of what's going on in neurotransmitters of the brain. We can see, for example, if patients have a hard time sleeping, Sometimes it's because their serotonin is low or their GABA response is low. If they're stressed, their dopamine levels might be off balance. We can see if their thyroid response is good or not. And according to the clinical context, we can do any other testing if necessary. So we'll go ahead and click X there. And we're going to click the third icon. Now this is going to break down the chemical analysis of the brain and the digestive system. So on the left-hand side, you can see here, we break down the brain into a few segments, the amygdala, the left limbic system, the right limbic system, the left and right frontal lobe, and we can see any activity going on in these specific areas. So on the bottom right-hand side, you can see a table that's going to show color coding of what's going on in what segments of the brain. So we're going to see red is going to show blood pressure is increased, blue is going to show a severe hypoxia, teal is going to show that the cells are overreacting, Purple will show some tissue perfusion is mildly decreased. Light blue will show mild hypoxia. Gray is our normal range, which is what we like. Peach color is showing that the cells are underreactive, and yellow is showing vasoconstriction. So if we click on any of these areas of the brain, it'll show this target on the top right moving around based on what's going on where. So any colors we see, we're going to go ahead and click on that target and it'll give a pop-up of exactly what's going on in a specific area, such as sodium levels reduced, capillary bed, normal ranges, microcirculation, blood viscosity. We can see, see tissue PCO2 levels uh, and a lot more information. So this target here, if you don't want to look at the values down here, is going to show the severity of the condition. So the further away from gray it is, the more severe the condition is. So we can detect a lot of neurological problems such as blood pressure being increased. Um, in some cases, we're able to find um, mercury or metal toxicities based on the results and based on the overall diagnosis. So we can see if patients who have metal fillings might have a risk for mercury toxicities in the brain, which we've been doing many studies to show that is a big rising concern for their future health as they get older. So a lot of information for the brain. If you stop on this icon down here, you can zoom in, zoom out, and control which way the brain is swiveling if you need to look at it at a different angle. If we click on this icon right here that represents digestive system, we'll get the 3D imaging of the digestion. 
So here's a great way to detect exactly what's going on in the entire digestive system, system such as the liver, the stomach, the ascending and descending part of the large intestines, the small intestines, the uterus for women, bladder, the pancreas. We can see um, adrenal output over in the kidneys and see exactly what's going on. Now we've color-coded everything on the bottom right-hand side here. So yellow is showing mild inflammation. Pink is showing the cells are underreactive. The peach color here is an inflammatory process phase two. Green is going to show fibrosis or scarring. Gray is our normal range. A light blue is showing chronic inflammation. Also cell growth and cell division is being increased. Light purple is showing tissue perfusion mildly decreased. Teal is showing that the cells are overreactive. Darker blue is showing tissue perfusion is decreased and possibility of hypoxia. Red is showing acute inflammation phase one. Purple is showing chronic inflammation with tissue destruction. And this dark green is showing hypoxia and cell growth. So when we look at the different organs, we can click on them. And again, our target moves around. And we can go ahead and click that target and get the detailed information of what's going on to possibly see why. So we can avoid many other tests and see what's going on where. Now, common reasons we see uh, mild inflammation in the large intestines, it could be because of gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance. We can see um, symptoms of diverticulitis. We can see any type of problems in, digest in the digestive system and be able to get a better assessment without having to outsource any other testing to be done. Now we can click on the third icon on the right that's going to show the geniourinary tract, which is just zoomed in a little bit more on the areas for men of the prostate, women on the rectum, the uterus, and the bladder. And we can see exactly what's going on. Exactly. Again, we can stop it and zoom in wherever we need to to get an overall summary further. And if we click up here on the adrenal cortex, we can see the estimated adrenaline response. So we're going to go ahead and exit right there. Now this fourth icon, if we click it, we're going to show an area where we can input the lab data versus our physiological data. You can click down on any of these. If we've imported, for example, a thyroid activity, we will have the levels here in comparison to our report to keep all of our results in one place. We get our autonomic nervous system response. And if we click anything here again, it's very interactive. We get a detailed explanation of what's going on. The sixth icon is what we love to give to the patients. Now, based on their health, we will see different foods that their body does not digest well foods that are recommended for them, foods that are not recommended. We'll see how many calories a day they are burning based on their physiological health, their circulatory system, their digestive system. We can show cooking methods for them. We take it one step further and go to nutritional advice. Now, we can see micronutrients that the patient is lacking. If they're lacking any vitamins or minerals, if they should supplement with plant therapies or trace elements that will help improve their health, it will be inputted here. If they don't want to take any supplements, they can choose food associations on the right-hand side that will be food that they can eat instead of taking a supplement. On the bottom, it will show dietary advice, how many calories, percentage from what types of food they should eat, um, an overall summary of possibly reducing salt, alcohol, different types of cooking methods. It will show a type of diet they should have, if they should drink more water. It will show if they need to supplement with anything such as omega-3, lycopene for prostate problems, uh, CPOs, uh, phytoestrogens, or anything that will help improve their health. Now, we, rec we never recommend statin drugs. We always want to take an alternative, healthier approach with our patients. On the seventh icon, we can see our fitness and sports indicator. So a lot of athletes like to look at this page to see the maximum minimum ratios of their cardiac rhythm, rhythm stability, their heart rate, their body fat mass, uh, information on their BMI. On the eighth icon, we have physician notes. So if we have any other recommendations, like for example, avoid dairy, we can go ahead and click OK, and that'll be imported into our data here. So if we exit there and we double click our patient name, we can go to this one icon that says status report on the top hand corner, and it'll give us a three page printout of what we want to give to them to take home. 
Now, our physician notes that, notes that we had put that says avoid dairy, we can put here. As you have this in your practice, we will import your practitioner information so it automatically generates under your title and your address. It'll show the patient vital signs and it'll show their dietary recommendations based on their health, what to avoid, what to eat, so they have something to go home with so they know what to do for the next step. Now we can print the whole report if we want to. It is not necessary, but if the patient needs it, we can have it for them or give it to other test results. We can send it into Medicare, uh, PPOs or HMOs for their billing if they need it. It's not necessary. The machine comes with basically everything we need and makes it very, very easy and self-explanatory. So we come in and we train your billers on how to bill properly on the six CPT codes that we use. We can send in reports to the insurances if necessary. Usually it is not, but you have it for your patient record. If you want to export the files, you can, or you can keep it all here or import files from other computers onto the software. Thank you for your time. This concludes the ending of the summary of the 3D body analysis. As you can see, there's a lot of information to cover. We get a lot of results and it's very, very fast. Now the four FDA registrations and above gold standard and accuracy lets us know that we can rely on this machine for every patient that we come in and out of our practice, whether they're healthy or not. So we can have better patient outcome for the future and their current health conditions. If you have any other questions, you can refer to our website at www.renewamedical.com.